Well, welcome back. Today we'll discuss the pitfalls of not taking finasteride after your hair transplant for maintenance of the result and to prevent further thinning. Today's case is a 35 year old popular Punjabi radio jockey by the name of Lakha. Lakha after his hair transplant met a guy online when he was searching for finasteride, the benefits of finasteride and whether or not to take finasteride after hair transplant like most people do. Most people are in the habit of not following the doctor's advice which is given in their best interest. Now this guy online advised Lakha not to take finasteride and that even without finasteride he will have a very good result. So he did just that surreptitiously without keeping his doctor in confidence. And after six months, he came to us with a result with which he was not very happy. On questioning further, he revealed that he had not taken finasteride after the first two weeks. So a touch-up procedure was done to fill up the gaps where the grafts didn't grow. So in these series of pictures, you see the result after one year of his first session of hair transplant. So having learned his lessons the hard way, like many of us do, many people don't have the luxury of learning from the lessons and having still enough grafts available for the next procedure for the touch-up sessions and for the evolving baldness in future. But Lakha learned his lessons and now he has no qualms whatsoever on taking 0.5 milligram maintenance dose of finasteride every day. And therefore he continues to enjoy a head full of hair much after his second hair transplant. He is well aware of the fact that his donor area, which was limited to start with in the first session, has thinned out further and with age will continue to thin because his baldness is aggressive. If he has to keep the hair that have been transplanted from thinning and to prevent the native thinning hair from getting lost due to baldness, which is progressive, he realizes that he has to continue finasteride for a long time or till his baldness gene switches off. He is 35 now and any time between 35 and 45, his baldness will become stable and that is the time he can discontinue finasteride if he wishes to. But then you will say, come on doctor, there are so many patients, so many people show cases online where PRP was used for uh, maintenance of the hair, where PRP was used to make the grafts grow after a hair transplant and you are telling us to take finasteride which is a very dangerous drug. Well, dangerous it might be in a very select few, very rare patients. But if you have undergone a good counselling, if the doctor has ruled out your likelihood of getting a side effect through various means, mostly counselling, you are not likely to get a side effect. Well, if you do, you can stop the drug and your problems will get back to normal. Many people hesitate in taking the drug, but when advised to do so for one month, to give it a trial, they are happy with its use. Even if minor side effects happen, most of them psychological, they tend to disappear after one month of continuous use of this drug. So those who do not want to take finasteride should at least give a trial of one month's finasteride. So these patients who have had good results with not using finasteride are very few patients and mostly those patients whose baldness has stabilized, in whom the progression of baldness has come to a halt. In these patients, finasteride is not required because the DHT is not acting on the hair anymore. The gene has switched off. So in these patients, without finasteride, you can hope to expect a good result. But these cases have to be sorted out by the doctor, by counselling and by taking the history of baldness, the progression of baldness. But it is very rare to find a 25 year old in whom there is visible sign of extensive baldness who will have a good result without taking finasteride. Well, I have yet to see a person who's 25 getting a good result. He might get a good result initially if he is say 35 years old when the male pattern baldness gene is on its vein, but his hair which is planted will continue to thin because the donor area will continue to thin and the donor area is a reflection of the planted hair. If it thins, the planted hair will thin and the native thinning hair will continue to be lost and over a period of time, he will continue to become more bald. And when baldness happens at 25 to 35, it is very aggressive. If a hair transplant procedure is not properly planned, 
if the patient is not counseled about the need to take finasteride and if grafts are lost in this process, there is great difficulty in providing coverage over the years as baldness progresses. This is what patients need to understand before embarking on the journey of hair transplant. Otherwise, all will be lost, all these efforts, so much of wasted emotions, finances and time just without taking finasteride. So this is what we need to understand that though there may be patients in whom finasteride need not be taken after a hair transplant surgery, but the vast majority of patients, especially patients who are younger and with aggressive baldness cannot do without taking finasteride for six months and then a maintenance dose for as long as the gene switches off. Androgenetic alopecia is a ruthless marauder of grafts, a ruthless marauder of grafts which do not have the protective umbrella of finasteride. It does not spare anyone who is genetically encrypted to have male pattern baldness. Finasteride is the sentinel, the only protector you have against aggressive progressive baldness on the one hand and healthy survival of planted grafts on the other. Well, it also protects you from shock loss, which you might experience after a hair transplant if too many grafts are taken. This is one use of finasteride, which most people tend to forget. So till we have an alternative to finasteride, the use of which does not disturb you, you need to follow the doctor's advice. It is an advice given in your best interest. Your doctor is not a mad man. He is not a madman to stick his neck out in a fiercely competitive field of hair transplant where so many clinics are advising hair transplant where you don't need to take finasteride. Just come and get a head full of hair, whatever age possible, whatever the level of your donor hair. They promise to grow hair using merely PRP and various other magic lotions and potions. So it is for you to understand why your doctor is advising you finasteride. He is advising you finasteride in your best interest. He is sticking his neck far out. So this is my advice for the weekend for you to mull over. Have a great weekend and if you have any questions about this video, please do not forget to leave a comment below. Your comments are deeply appreciated and I make sure that I will reply to each and every comment that you post. Thank you for watching and God bless you.